Greetings, travelers. Strange that I would find you in this place again. Or maybe not. I think you're living under a very shiny chrome-colored rock if you haven't heard of Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runners. It's like the holiday season, it's completely inescapable because I can't even chat with my friends without someone blasting Mariah Carey or in this case, someone posting Edge Runner memes. I shouldn't be too surprised, the show was so good it inspired a whole game in 2076 prequels. These yearly releases really are getting out of hand. Unlike the video game though, Edge Runners manages to make the cyber enhancements look cool as fuck. If that happened in the game when you activated the cyborg parts, it would go up at least three notches in my book. It's a good ass anime, and a good ass anime. The best of both worlds. It gives me crippling nostalgia for the anime of Eld which had copious amounts of tits and gore just for the raw shock value, and I probably shouldn't have watched Elf and Light at 9 years old, back when shows were edgy for the sake of edginess. That explains why it's called Edge Runners, and doesn't explain why I'm putting a blanket minor spoiler warning on this video that you're going to ignore anyways if you haven't watched it yet. The opening episode is beautifully simple at setting up the world and main characters. It's like the beginning of Up, where it depressed the fuck out of me, but instead of being happy before they drop the bombshell, it's just sad the whole time. It uses the new and highly innovative cinematic technique of showing and not telling. I already like this kid, an outcast who's smart but also ends up making things harder for the rest of his family when he tries to cover for them. Would he also be someone who probably gets in over his head? Yeah, that's all you had to say. Good to know that in the distant future, it is still common for your parent to talk about how hard they are working for a dream that you never asked for while you were a stupid teenager trapped in a car ride. This hits way too close to home for me. Imagine working your ass off and your son turns into a fourth-rate YouTube micro-celebrity. This episode is nice, very poetic, driving home the cyberpunk genre in its pure essence, where having no money means automatic locks when being behind on rent, no medical care, and having to use the discount option on cremation services. When shows get this depressing, it goes full circle for me and just becomes absurd. It's almost humorous. Almost. I'm starting to think that cyberpunk as a genre is a criticism of capitalism. In a world defined by money, poor people are poor because they deserve it and rich people are rich because they earned it. Even though David Martinez is a straight A student who is probably better than most of his peers, he is made of poverty, so it doesn't matter how good he is, his peers are never going to accept him. And with all this shit, I'd probably start to daydream instead as well. When I wanted sunshine, I got rain, and then I saw her face. And all it takes is a hot character to turn David to a life of crime. Also getting revenge on his bullies plays a part too. After its brutal opening, we can finally witness David's ascent. Lucy is the hot cyberpunk waifu that opens up the door for David into the life of an edge runner. Or cyberpunker. She is equal parts attractive, cold, and mysterious. But at her core has a simple dream to go to the moon to get away from the superficial life of Night City. Or maybe not. I guess stealing the psycho implant that your mother was smuggling to get revenge might have some serious consequences. Or at least if your David serve as an introduction to prove that he is really something special and not just another street rat clawing at the small glimmer of a chance at getting some money. No one else is able to use the Sandivistin implant three times without going crazy, let alone ten without even using drugs to keep yourself sane. Oh, hang on, I know exactly where this is going. Are we assembling the crew? Ah, this really is an anime. Alright, it's time to introduce the team. We got our boy Main, the man with the muscle and the charisma to keep everybody together. He looks after his crew because he knows that reputation is everything in the underworld. You got Dorio, which is Main's significant other that keeps him from going off the rails. You have Rebecca, the psycho who is an actual anime freak who embraces the complete derangement of the world she lives in. And you have Falco. And Kiwi, the super hacker who nobody cared for until she put on the mask. 
Where I like Edge Runners the most is that I know for a fact I'm still watching a studio trigger show. The story beats are exactly where they usually are, and to be clear, I like a lot of studio trigger shows. Where I got hooked this time around though is in the masterful blend of Studio Trigger's action sequences and typical story beats but with some complex characters to get yourself invested in. There is some actual humanity put into these people. David makes choices in ways that are relatable. He installs the Sandy because he doesn't want to be at the whims of his bullies. And he regrets his decisions too after beating the shit out of his tormentors because he knows he can no longer live on the straight and narrow like his mom wanted him to. When he laughs maniacally at his power trip, you kind of feel it with him, but you already know that it's going to all come crashing down real hard. It's not just David who goes through these motions, though. A solid chunk of the crew has to sort through some shit, and you realize that they all have a facade that they show to the world, but there's a lot more going on than just that. Nobody wants to show their vulnerable side in cyberpunk, because even though it can bring you closer together, it also opens the door for people to take advantage of you. In fact, that exact thing has happened to most of the crew. Everyone has been screwed over by someone else for money, and it's these emotional barriers that ultimately push people apart, and it's these conflicts that really define the overall story. I like this character cast. Their flaws don't completely define them while feeling completely organic, and there is a reason that you don't see characters this relatable this often, and it is because it is very hard to pull off. I mean, just think about it for a second. It's people using technology that doesn't even exist, and yet I completely get why they do it. Why they don't just want to be strong, but why they have to be. So I give props to the writers where it is due. But somehow, to top it off, this solid emotional story is masterfully blended with over-the-top silly anime characters who completely embrace the endless bloodshed and insanity without a care in the world. And even then, Rebecca has some moments of genuine concern to try and help David when he's in trouble. Its themes are plain and simple. In a world as fucked up as Night City, no one is invincible, but even if the worst happens, you can still find family. And in the end, what people think they want is rarely what they actually want. The animation had me hyped up when it needed to, and it knew when to let the emotions take over the viewer. It's not a perfect show, but it is perfectly enjoyable. Having some very strong episodes and a rock-solid ending. It's only 10 episodes long, so it's pretty easy to get through. I'm not gonna spoil the whole thing because... You should watch it. It was good enough to almost make me want to buy the game if it's on sale, and also almost brainwashed me into forgetting that like every AAA company, they worked their staff to the bone and misled a lot of people with all their marketing. In a way, you feel like making an original TV series based on a video game universe should work most of the time in concept. It just never comes together 99% of the time for these projects. What's so crazy and unheard of about Edge Runners is that they use the medium to their advantage. You don't have to worry about player power scaling and have your final boss fall flat. You can make them actually terrifying as hell. Edge Runners takes all the cool stuff from the video game and makes it flashier, avoids many of its shortcomings, and lines up the emotional highs perfectly with the soundtrack. But beyond that, it's a solid show that easily stands by itself. It's stupid to me that this is probably going to end up being my favorite studio trigger show bringing me to the brink of tears several times, but it still doesn't hold the title of the only show that made me cry. I've watched a lot of anime over the year, and I feel like most anime is kind of like junk food. It's easy, simple, and enjoyable, but a lot of times you end up craving something a little bit meatier. Edge Runners is like a nice home-cooked meal. It's some decent basic stuff, and it probably could have been cooked a little bit more, but damn, it hits just right. Now let's get out there and agree that Lucy is best girl. 